All right, in this case, we're dealing with a projectile launched below the horizontal, which means that we should have a negative initial y velocity. And with all uh, motion problems, we have our initial x position is 0, time is 0, our acceleration in the x direction is 0 because we ignore air resistance, the initial y position is 0, and the initial time is 0. Now it starts at 14.4 meters above the ground, which means it falls negative 14.4 meters because it's below where it started and up is positive. And with any kind of vertical motion, the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. All right, to find the initial x velocity, I'm going to use cosine. So it's 10 times the cosine of negative 10. Um, which gives me 9.85 meters per second. And now I'm going to find it in the y direction, and that's 10 times the sine of negative 10, which gives me negative 1.74 meters per second as the initial y velocity. Now the x velocity doesn't change because the acceleration is zero, so that's the same across the board. But of course, the y velocity is going to increase in the negative y direction. All right, now, be, uh, to avoid using the quadratic formula, I'm, I'm actually going to find the, the final y velocity first. So this is the velocity with which it hits the ground. All right, and so I plug in my numbers. I get negative 1.74 as my v naught, and then for a, I've got negative 9.8, and for y, negative 14.4. When I work out that, I get 3.02 plus 2.82 and I add those and I get 285.3 and then when I take the square root I get V equals negative 16.9 meters per second. Now remember when you take the square root it's plus or minus but we know that it's a downward velocity that we care about so we want the negative 16.9 meters per second. Now in order to find time now that I have both Y velocities I can use V equals V naught plus AT all right, when I rearrange the formula, I get t equals v minus v naught over a. I plug my numbers in, and I get time is 1.55 seconds. Now remember, time is the same in both the x and y directions. From here, I can find the x displacement, or the range, and I'm going to use x equals v naught t plus 1 half at squared, but of course acceleration is zero, so that same that second term drops out. Now I can plug in and I get 9.85 times 1.55, and I get an, a, an x displacement of 15.3 meters, and I can find my uh, landing velocity by taking the, taking using Pythagorean theorem, and I plug in, and v is equal to the square root of my x velocity, 9.85 squared, plus my final y velocity squared, which is the square root of 382.6, which gives me a velocity of 19.6 meters per second. And since it's a velocity, we also need a direction. So I'm going to use the inverse tangent of the y velocity divided by the x velocity. I plug my numbers in and that gives me an angle of negative 59.8 degrees. All right, so my final velocity is 19.6 meters per second at negative 59.8 degrees. <laughs>